So a very good morning. Uh, today we are uh, observing World Bee Day, and uh, World Bee Day was proposed by a country called Slovenia. So Slovenia is known as the most bee-friendly country in the world, and uh, me. Uh, as a beekeeper from 11 years and I would really like to go there once because if you go to Slovenia, everywhere there is an expression of bees. If you go to bookstore, there will be an art expression of bee. And one in 10 citizens of that country is a beekeeper. So there was a beekeeper as well as a beekeeping teacher. Uh, his name was uh, Anton Yansha. He was a beekeeping teacher and also a painter. So he taught beekeeping to so many people and he was so expert in that field. He was a very keen observer. So because um, people uh, really loved him the way he worked in the field of agriculture and they wanted to uh, honor him with something and the people uh, chose this day May 20th which is his birthday and they proposed to United Nations and United Nations agreed to this idea and concept uh, in 2017 and they uh, they started to observe this day as World Bee Day and they, uh, they not only uh, are concentrating on uh, how only bees can be protected, it is actually uh, the, uh, the observing day for all the pollinators in the world. Not only bees, also um, bats, some animals, some other insects which are doing pollination. Because pollinators are declining in the, in the, in the most uh, peak rate. So we have to observe this and uh, you know, attach importance to conserve pollinators. Otherwise, when we don't have any pollinators, we will lose everything. So uh, today we are going to discuss a special topic because uh, this topic is being um, you know always talked about in, ba uh, in Bangalore because this particular conflict is burning in Bangalore not only in Bangalore uh, most of the um, you know metro cities where urbanization is growing in high rates this is the conflict we are facing. So people, this is a desensitization talk about human bee conflict in urban India. So in urban India, what we are facing is uh, the cut of all mature trees. So the bees which are uh, nesting in those trees since more than 50 million years, yes, uh, more than 15 million years. Now they have no nesting sites. So they will come to human habitat to nest, to continue their cycle, life cycle. So because of this, there is a conflict. Conflict basically comes whenever there is a less understanding. I will repeat, when there is a less understanding about what is uh, a, an intruder, so-called intruder, uh, and what is its nature? Why uh, the intruder is getting into your habitat? And is that your habitat? Is that their habitat? So these are all the concepts that we have to think and that we have to understand more to uh, mitigate this in a sustainable way. 
So, firstly, uh, we are working uh, working in the field of apiculture since uh, 2011, and we have been training uh, beekeeping for tribal, rural, and also urban people. And we are functioning in so many states, districts, and uh, through our YouTube channel and social media, we are educating so many beekeepers. And we do workshops for uh, uh, beginners. And we are training at least 1,000 beekeepers, introducing new 1,000 beekeepers to, um, to the world. And uh, that is, we are very proud of. And we are keeping ourselves, uh, ourselves updated by collaborating with uh, so many universities and uh, research institutes. And we have been training tribals and converting them to um, beekeepers from honey hunters. You now you need to understand this. We have come to an extent, a, a point where we cannot differentiate between tribals and urbaners because um, killing is killing. So we, we will have to be very, very clear when we have to conserve. We should, we should not be deviating in, in the concepts. So killing is killing. When tribals hunt for honey, sometimes out of their impatience, they may kill also by burning the bees. And when they cut the comb, a lot of larvae will die. That is also killing. So we are we we as a bee conservators we will have to speak of this particular uh, topic because we have to protect bees uh, whether they are from, from the tribals or from the urbaners we have to protect them. How we can protect hives in the forest areas is uh, the way how we teach uh, these um, honey hunters and convert them to beekeepers. That is what we are doing since 2009 from uh, uh, a place called uh, Joida Kund and uh, Dandeli and many other places in Karnataka. Also in uh, Chhattisgarh, in Dantewada. So even the people who are willing to do honey hunting, we are, we are actually converting them to beekeepers. Uh, so this is our tribal uh, development activity in Dantewada. In we went there and we uh, organized and uh, we coordinated with so many tribal leaders. Um, so Dantewada is a place where if you, if you search in the Google, you will see only dead bodies because it's a core Naxal um, area. Now we have we have been working there and uh, we are reaching beekeeping to the right people and the people who deserve and people who can readily monetize this. So by this we we have joined with so many self-help groups of uh, Dantewada and we are trying to bring in some tribal group to people. We are giving boxes through funding of district administration and Khadi and Village Industries Commission. We are, we are really trying hard out there. Uh, we are developing local ecosystems so that even rural, rural entrepreneurs, micro entrepreneurs can come up and uh, do their own beekeeping activities. Now we are coming to the main topic. Uh, uh, let us understand how many species of bees we have. We have more than 20,000 bee species in the world. Most of them are solitary bees and very few are social bees. In India, we find these four, predominantly these four species. Apicerana indica, which you are seeing in the top left, they are cavity nesting bees. They don't nest outside. They will be nesting inside uh, the cavities. Uh, most of the time in our organic terrace gardeners and terrace gardeners in general, when they uh, have that composting, uh, earthen composting bins like Kamba. That is the, that is the favorite place for Apis Sarana and Dika and most of the time they come and they nest there. You can, you can call us, we can come transfer the whole colony to the beehive box where you can take care of them and other them and divide them also and 
can harvest honey also with that. So that is about how you can protect Apis serana indica, which are coming to your habitat in terrace or in any uh, habitat in your home that can be shifted to the box and can be domesticated. I'm referring to Apis serana indica now. Now we are coming to Apis floria. Apis floria are also called as dwarf bees. They are smaller than Apis serana indica and they go only within one kilometer radius where the Apis serana indica may go up to two kilometer radius being recorded. But, but for Apis floria, they are dwarf and they, they will not go far. And they maintain a very uh, small colony also and they make nests in uh, partially open spaces like hedges, on trees, and even in the um, some area of canopy and windows of uh, home uh, of residences that we have observed. So this particular species cannot be domesticated. They cannot be put in the box and we cannot do uh, any kind of bee rearing. Now this particular species is very docile. I repeat, these species are very, very docile. You don't have to, um, you know, call pest control companies or even us to protect you, uh, protect, uh, to make yourself protected from the bees because bees are very, very docile. They sting only when you go there very nearby and put your hands on it and they will not even chase you after four to five feet away from the beehive. So just remember, you will have to be away from the beehive for one or two months after they arrive to your place and just leave them, they will go. They will go and they will uh, nest on their own in, in some other place. Now, uh, we, we have Apis dorsata, which is um, our uh, rock bees. These are all the bees where you are seeing in Bangalore in most of the metro cities uh, and people seeing them in their balconies, out, uh, outside the window and in the, uh, uh, what is that, the staircases and uh, corridors where you use corridor for uh, uh, like in apartments and uh, hostels and schools and in uh, big buildings where uh, uh, you can see more than 20 or 30th floor. So these, these are all the habitat where they are nesting right now. As, as I told you earlier, these bees nest in the higher sites, the tall, tallest structure and, uh, and most stable structure. We used to have a lot of uh, uh, mature trees in Bangalore before we had infrastructure development like metros and widening of road and also uh, apartment complexes gated communities you take it any any intervention by humans in the name of development we have compromised with our local ecosystem so bees come to number one because we have cut the trees and they don't have any nesting site right now all they have is our big buildings and they will have to nest because they will keep on coming to Bangalore until and unless Bangalore is having with trees and plants. We are the people when a uh, steel bridge and something like that happened when we went to uh, streets and we protested. Now when we have uh, protected our plants and trees, they will have to be pollinated. When they will have to be pollinated, bees will come to Bangalore. So this is the reality. And uh, the next species is stingless bees. So in Bangalore, wherever you go, you will find this uh, particular beehives inside the tubes of uh, electric poles. If you go to electric poles uh, installed by Vescom, you can see a, an iron pipe where uh, the cables are uh, drawn inside uh, the ground and asphalting is being done from the top so that water should not seep in. 
so if you observe keenly in that particular iron pipes there will be these beehives and they are stingless they don't have stingers they 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 cannot sting also so they make very small beehives and economically important because they are able to sit on very small flowers pollinating uh, the special types of uh, flowers which are designed for them because the size of flower should be proportional to size of pollinator then only efficient pollination happens now this is a uh, apis mellifera which is being uh, imported to india in late 1970s now predominantly whatever beekeeping is happening in north india it is with this species now we have three types of bees in the world uh, i so, sorry in, in the beehive one is uh, the worker bee and uh, drone bee and queen bee so worker bees take care of everything taking care of the younger ones building the new comb protecting the hive going going out for uh, foraging to bring in pollen nectar water and also taking care of the younger ones will uh, will include um, feeding the younger larvae once in 3 minutes and uh, maintaining the temperature ripening of honey everything is being done by worker bees so in a beehive there will be 90% of population of worker bees and only 10% of drone bees because drone bees are a liability because they don't work drone bees look fat and black and they they are a reserve only to mate with queen bee so because worker bees are all females and they are sterile they cannot reproduce but drone bees are male bees and they can mate with purging queen and that's why bee hives keep them as a reserve so that if something happens to queen or if they have to divide the colony they are useful otherwise they are not useful in the dearth dearth season where they cannot source uh, uh, much of the food they will uh, the worker bees will kill the drones and they will make them to go away from the bee hives and drones are allowed to other other bee hives um, but when when there is a dearth period they, even they will not allow and sometimes as i told you worker bees will kill all the drone bees if they don't agree to go away from the bee hives that is when we know that there is a fall of nectar flow so queen bee so whether it could be a colony of 400 bees or 1 lakh bees there will be only one queen bee she is capable of laying 40 eggs to 1500 eggs per day depending on the command of worker bees the worker bees will command and keep all the calculation about inventory and whatever development is happening inside hive they, they maintain the data the master data will be with worker bees and they collectively take decisions and the decisions will be um followed in a particular protocol um they have their pro own protocol for every challenges in the nature whether it could be a challenge of uh, predators whether it could be a challenge of uh, starvation whether it could be challenge of uh, climatic factors anything they have a protocol to follow and they will do so so for the queen they will uh, they will communicate queen to lay less eggs when there is a a uh, starvation period when they have abundance of input of uh, especially for the food what they do is they will communicate queen to lay more eggs when there is a time for division to make new queen colony they will communicate queen to lay drones drone eggs so that they can uh, the new queen can mate and the existing queen will take 50% of worker bees and she will leave the hive so referring to the urban conflict if you don't touch that particular bee hive one bee hive can become four more bee hives if you don't touch the bee hive 
by cutting it or spraying it. So if you intervene, one hive may stay as only one beehive, and when queen will become old, the whole the whole colony may collapse. So whether you use humane way of uh, you know cutting the comb, not spraying it, or you if you are using the poison to spray on it, you will be intervening in some or the other way. So just remember, um, you will have to understand this particular life cycle of bees and the roles of bees so that you can relate them as a family. Because if you can see, they take care of their younger ones, they raise them, they wait until the younger ones are capable of flying, then only they will leave the colony. They will maintain stock for their younger ones. Everything is like a family. So if you are killing them, you are killing a family. Now this is a life cycle of a worker bee. So within three days, they will become larva and within 21 days, they will become adult. Now after 21 days of becoming adult, uh, uh, after that, Another 21 days will be spent inside the beehive looking after the younger ones, protecting the hive by being a guard bee. Yes, they protect their hive by being a guard bee. Uh, three to four guard bees will be appointed in the entrance of the hive so that they can, they can protect the hive from uh, the predators or if they cannot protect from the predators, they can at least um, you know, communicate the fellow worker bees to, uh, to do the attack on the predator if it is really big. So, and also uh, if the worker bees are bringing food properly or if they are not bringing food properly, if they are bringing something else along with them like parasites, everything will be checked by uh, guard bees. So foragers will take care of everything after that. So they, they have 21 days to become adult, 21 days inside the beehive and another 21 days by being a forager. So that's it, they will die. But queen bee is capable of mating with the drone bees and they are capable of living up to two to eight years because queens are, are fed with special food called royal jelly which is secreted by worker bees. So queen is their survival factor. In this process of removal of uh, hives, if you, if you don't spray, even if you are cutting the comb, by, when you are cutting the comb, if you hit the queen bee, the whole colony will collapse. So we have to be very, very sensitive when we have to take take this decision of removal of beehives. Now we are coming to the core um, well, subject on, on the conflict. Now you have, you have the rock bees in your balcony. You have to understand about the rock bees first. They are the major pollinators of South Asia. They, are, they exist throughout South, South Asia and Southeastern Asia and they are the gigantic Asiatic bees. They cover the foraging area up to 9 kilometer radius. So if, when I say 9 kilometer radius, they will do more pollination. Not only to the food crops, they do pollination for the forest, weeds and whatever plants are there, they go for it. Since they are they make a very big hive, they will require more food for their younger ones. So they will forage more. They, they don't have much of the selected plants like our Apis serana or stingless bees do. They go for almost every, almost. So they maintain biodiversity by pollinating the forest flora and as well as many other flora which are required by other species, other animals. We, we just don't have to look into mankind only by looking into only food crops, only agricultural crops. 
some plants which are not um, used or uh, eaten by humans will be eaten by something else. So there is a purpose for each and everything in the world. So we have to be kind enough to understand. And they do some honey production in the tribal areas. They collect it and after they squeeze honey, there is a wax production also. These two things are for economics, not for ecology. So this is how the honey hunting is being done. Because of honey hunting, one tribal society that we have seen in 2008 and 9, that is when I started beekeeping. So they had harvested 5.5 tons of honey and the next year it dropped to 1.2, 1.6 tons of honey because uh, they have cut all the cones and there is a competition between so many teams of honey hunters and some honey hunters are not even tribals. So these are all the aspects that we have to see. Uh, tribals used to consume honey for themselves, for their own family, for their own village. Now they want to sell to traders of urban areas and businessmen. Now there is a demand and supply situation in the forest. And, they, and even if they don't uh, see honey in the beehive, they will cut it because there is a value for wax. So there is, the value of wax is approximately double the value of uh, honey. So they, whether they harvest honey or not, they will get some money. So that's why they cut everything. They will not leave with anything over there. Now, um, why do they come to Bangalore? They come to Bangalore to, to pollinate. So which trees? Pongemia, copper pots, mayflower, golden bell, eucalyptus, and so many Zizophus related trees. And so many trees which depend on the bee pollination. So these, these are all the trees which are giving most of the food, food sources for the bees which are coming to urban habitats. So think about it, if you want to get rid of the bees, you will have to remove all these trees, which is not advisable. And if you do that, if we, we, we will never able to bring them back. So pollination of weeds also is very, very important because weeds are the sources for so many other things. Even sometimes weeds are necessary for the uh, soil, health of soil also. Uh, when you see the type of weeds, you will see uh, the health of soil. Um, the, the, there are some indications. Now, there are wild tulsi, sessile joyweed, tridax dicey, and so many other species of uh, uh, weeds. So, well, with sessile joyweed, you can actually you can actually harvest honey if you are doing urban beekeeping. Yes, we are promoting urban beekeeping also. If you want to, um, if, yeah, if uh, if you if you want to continue this meeting, you just have to wait. I will just come back uh, with the same link you can use. I will just come back. Uh, you don't have to uh, go away because this is going to continue. So, uh, nesting habitat, uh, their preference is most mostly the tall structure and the stable structure. And their migration happens before October to Bangalore and before March to Bangalore. Before October is post monsoon and the March is the beginning of summer. So please understand this. This particular time is very, very important. Before October and before March, you will have to do something so that you can mitigate this issue in a sustainable way. So loss of mature trees is a major cause for their uh, loss of nesting habitat. And balconies and beams will make, their, make them a perfect nesting site because they can look at the site, look at the view and there is a partial shade and partial sun for them. 
and uh, it's a stable structure it will not swing to the wind so that means perfect nesting site for rock trees so how do you mitigate this so you will have to remember before october and before march you will have to apply some pungent uh, liquid or material to the surfaces where they have chosen as a nesting site after they leave and before they come you will have to apply it to the those surfaces or repaint it in something because they once they have marked in that particular uh, space surface they may come back in the next next year or the other hive may come uh, and nest in the same place because there will be marking and smell of bee wax so that they can come and make their nest so apply something on it and then make the ceiling unstable so they generally build this in ceiling and some other parts so you will have to tie something on it drill or stick some something like screen or mesh something like that so that it will be always be swinging and it makes them so unstable they will not choose that site as a nesting site they will leave they will not choose your balcony as a nesting site so most of the people will complain that uh, they are facing uh, the problem in the evening because after after evening uh, they will have to switch on light and uh, the bees will get inside the uh, in their home so fill in somehow you will have to fill the uh, space between the sliders in the apartment uh, windows and after that you you have to use blackout curtains because apis dorsata is the only bee in the world where they can forage in the uh, full moon night one week earlier to full moon and one week after full moon they will be active in the nights also so you will have to use blackout curtains in order to not to make them confused about artificial lights because they tend to confuse about the sun uh, as a as a, if you switch on the artificial light they will confuse as it as a sun so they they should be avoided by using this blackout curtains and bees understand about your movements bees understand about your uh, threatening movements and they see you before they start their um egg laying i mean the queen lays eggs and continue their life cycle in a particular nesting site before that they will observe you and they will look at you if you are threatening for them or not they are not uh, dumb creatures please understand this they will see you and they when they see you not as their threat they will continue their nest now when they have seen you when they have understood you why can't you see them and understand them yes i know a very big bee hive looks very scary in your balcony and especially there, when there is a concern of uh, um you know having when there is a concern of having the uh, uh, small children and elderly people at home you you may have to uh, act a little um, wisely uh, to take care of them so what you have to do is to um, avoid them for 2 to 3 months if you can avoid them for 2 to 3 months they will migrate this apis dorsata are migratory in nature so please please uh, get uh, understand this you, all you have to do is to wait when you can wait when you can ignore them for a while if you if you if you can please do it we have a way to mitigate this issue in a most sustainable way we have experimented it all we need is some support from uh, the citizens some support from the government 
if we have that particular support we can actually relocate them in the most scientific and sustainable way um, we have to carry the whole beehive away from bangalore not inside bangalore remember when you remove hive even in humane way if you leave them very nearby they will go to other building so that other building owner or the apartment owner will not be interested in sustainable methods so the, he may call pest control companies and pest control companies are actually charging 1000 to 1500 rupees to remove beehives by killing them so we as a educated society we are contributing to pest control companies to lose our own bees to kill our own bees in a economic sense if i talk about that we are killing our own national assets because they are capable of increasing our food crops up to 30% the productivity will increase up to 30% and when they come to urban area in a particular time of year we are killing them if we don't kill them they will go to agricultural land by migrating by migration and pollinate the agricultural lands nearby it is being recorded they may migrate up to 200 km uh, 200 km south most studies are required to study about these species uh, especially in urban habitats how how much uh, damages we are doing to them how much we are losing them uh, we have to we have to be very very cautious about steps we are taking please note down all these mitigation uh, methods please try each and every steps before you call pest control companies calling pest control company is very very easy they will come they will kill it within 10 minutes killing is very easy whereas if you have to re relocate them in a sustainable way and a scientific way it takes lot of effort lot of time and more people will have to be involved so in the end coexistence is the only way but however if you require any help um, if you if you have to uh, get rid of the hive in a particular uh, spaces you can call us and we will help you out how we can possibly um, help it in a sustainable way